So we're going to switch to last but not least. We got Dr. Brent Sellers. He received his master's and bachelor's from Purdue University and his PhD from University of Missouri. He came to ONA in 2004 and became associate center director in 2014. He was interim director in 2019 and then became director of the Range Cattle Research Center in 2020. As our pasture weed scientist, weed extension agents have gifted him with extensive training on the examination of poor quality plant pictures and determining courses of action for weed management. So we, I think uh, Andrew is ready for you. Thank you, Laura. I still think my favorite picture I ever got was a picture of a cell phone with a picture on it to identify. That was my all time favorite. That was awesome. <clears throat> So Caetano, uh, my grad student, talked about Duracor earlier a little bit, and I just wanted to expand on that a little bit more. Um, Pratap Devkota is one of my colleagues that works out at the West Florida REC, and he is on Caetano's committee as well. All right. <clears throat> so as, as Caetano said, Corteva does have a relatively new uh, synthetic auxin herbicide called 4-peroxifen benzyl. Um, and Duracor is a premix of that new active and aminopyrrolin. And as he said, lower use rate, non-restricted use, and it doesn't contain 2,4-D, which is something Corteva felt was an advantage as we do have some issues with volatility with 2,4-D near sensitive crops like tomato. But, you know, this is a product that came to the state last year without much data. Uh, so we really didn't have any good recommendations with this product when it first got here. So that was one of the first things we really started jumping on. We've learned a little bit and through Caetano's work, we're, we're learning more about this. And there's a little bit of confusion uh, with the product because there's several now, now there's several herbicides that have aminopyrrolid in it. And understanding the rate structures between those, it, I think is gonna be beneficial for people because aminopyrrolid was brought to the state to control tropical soda apple. So that was the reason it was brought here. So after it was brought here, Milestone was the first product that was labeled for tropical soda apple. And we learned that you needed at least five ounces of milestone to control tropical soda apple. We also learned in that short amount of time that the spectrum of milestone, as far the weed spectrum of milestone was pretty narrow. And so it needed either a premix partner or a tank mix partner for milestone in itself. Grazenex came along, which at first came out as Forefront, and then they changed the name to Grazenex uh, a few years later. And our use rate, our standard use rate was 24 ounces. So, and then Chaparral was a, a premix of aminopyrrolid and metsulfuron, more for Bermuda grass and limpo grass, not so much for Bahia grass because it would severely injure it, especially if it's Pensacola. So when they brought Duracore to the market, they were, uh, it's labeled use rate as 12 to 20 ounces per acre. So, they did 12, 16, and 20 ounces here in this table. And I just did comparisons across the other products as far as how much it, you would need to apply for an equivalent rate of aminopyrrolid. And the equivalent rate of aminopyrrolid is important to get the tropical soda apple. So when they first brought it out, their initial recommendation was 12 ounces per acre because it would be around the same cost as Grazenex would be at 24 ounces per acre. But uh, we quickly learned that we had a lot of escapes on weeds, including tropical soda apple. So we, when we did some calculations, I started telling the applicators, like, if you're gonna use Duracore and I have no data on this yet, but if we just go by equivalent rates of aminopyrrolid, you're gonna need at least 20, 24 ounces of Grazenex or, <clears throat> I'm sorry, at least 16 ounces of Duracore to be equivalent to the rates required 
or that we normally use for tropical soda apple. All right, so these are the treatments that Catano talked about earlier, just set up a little bit differently. And I'm gonna show these um, in a virtual plot tour here, here in a second. But we use Duracore at 16 ounces uh, across the board, either alone with eight ounces of pasture guard or with 48 ounces of either Weedmaster or 2,4-D. And we compared that to our normal standard, the Grazenex and pasture guard. And we used either MSO or, or methylated seed oil, which is MSO or non-aonic surfactant as the adjuvant. Before we get into the actual video part, because once I click the slide, it's gonna start the video automatically. Um, this pasture was a watermelon field about a year and a half ago. They replanted the hay grass last summer. Um, so it's just over a year old, a pretty healthy stand of dog fennel, goat weed. And now we have a lot of smut grass coming back because that's predominantly what it was before as well. We're not gonna talk about smut grass today though. And one thing I learned, I am still not a good drone pilot. So the first two plots are a little shaky. It was pretty windy that day, um, but we'll get through it. So this is Duracore alone at 16 ounces and I'm already going to the next plot. Doesn't matter, you can see it didn't work that well uh, on either dog fin or goat weed. And then this is Duracore with the non-ionic surfactant. So again, not very good control. We may say that's 20% activity. It's smaller than the untreated, but not doing very well. Hopefully you don't get seasick. All right, so this should be Duracore plus Pasture Guard at 16 plus eight ounces with MSO. Did a very good job on these dog fennel. Dog fennel were two to three feet tall when we applied, but there is still goat weed in this, in these plots almost throughout. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. This is Duracore with Pasture Guard at the same rates at 16 plus eight with non ionic surfactant. A little bit more survival in the dog fennel overall. And I probably should have mentioned, if you look at the center of your screen when I stop, that is the center of the plot looking straight ahead. So there's Duracore and Weedmaster with MSO, pretty similar to Duracore plus Pasture Guard with the MSO. And then this is Duracore with Weedmaster with non-ionic surfactant. This did a little bit better than the Duracore plus pasture guard with non-ionic surfactant. And then we're coming into the two treatments with Duracore and 2,4-D, first with methylated seed oil, not as much activity as we saw with the weed master of the pasture guard, which I kind of expect. I feel like we need to be at at least, well, we need to be at six to four ounces if, with 2,4-D for a couple of reasons when we're using Duracore. And then we have our two standard plots, Grazenex plus Pasture Guard with non-ionic surfactant, or sorry, with MSO first. And then we switch gears and go to non-ionic surfactant. I did notice in this, these two treatments that the MSO did a little bit better than the non-ionic surfactant with this, uh, this mixture, uh, which is pretty different than what I normally see. Uh, so I'm not sure what was going on in that plot. All right, so that's virtual plot tour. What I'd like to do next, if I have time, I do, um, is go through some different scenarios <clears throat> just to kind of help people uh, think about their approach to their pasture weed management. So we just spent some time on dog fennel. So what would I recommend in this situation? If we're early in the season, 2,4-D is, is fairly active. And by early, I mean, these, pl these plants need to be less than 16 inches tall. If they get above 16 inches tall, we need to switch to a different herbicide. And even this early with 2,4-D, 
I feel we need to be at at least uh, three quarts, that's not three quarts, quart and a half of T4D. As these plants get bigger, you have to go to different herbicides. So you get above 16 inches, you get up to 36. Weedmaster works fairly well at three to, <clears throat> three to one to two quarts per acre. And then if you get above 36 inches, I go to Pasture Guard. Pasture Guard is my Cadillac herbicide for dog funnel control. That's your only weed in the pasture. I mean, that's about it. It does get more complicated. In limpo grass, what can you do for dog fennel? We didn't talk about that. If you are, if you're growing limpo grass and you have dog fennel, your option is dicamba. That's during the summer. You can apply other products from Thanksgiving to tax day during the cooler season. It tolerates uh, products like 2,4-D and Gray's Index better during the cool season. Uh, but during the summer, it does need to be dicamba. All right, so then when I go out to pastures, I start thinking about what's going to drive the herbicide recommendation. So we, we've talked about dog fennel, but I've also talked about earlier that uh, Durcor alone, and Caetano mentioned earlier, the Grazenext alone doesn't do that well at controlling dog fennel, or milestone doesn't either. And that's what we need. We need the amino pyrrolid to kill this plant in the center, which is the tropical soda apple. So <clears throat> Grazenext or Milestone or Duracor has to be the base herbicide. And then we're gonna add something to it to pick up the dog fennel. And the thistle is actually pretty sensitive to amino pyrrolid, so you don't need any, anything else. So if you're using, trying to kill tropical soda apple, Grazenext, Duracor, and then we're going to add Pasture Guard, Weedmaster, or 2,4-D, depending on the height of the dog fennel. Okay. All right, so get a little bit more complicated. You throw more weeds in it. Well, the good news is everything else that I've added here, um, the pigweed, thistle, even if it's bolting, and legume type weeds, like the showy crotillaria that's shown here, are all very sensitive to amino pyrrolid. So the recommendation at this point would be exactly the same as this one. So Gray's and Extra Duracore is gonna be your base program and you're adding something to it to pick up the rest of the weeds. All right, so this one gets a little bit more complicated because now we have goat weed in the bottom center. Goat weed is one of the more difficult broadleaf weeds to control, even though it looks like this little weak spindly plant. Um, and what we found in Bahia grass pastures is that maximum rate of 2,4-D allowed to be used in a pasture is the most effective on that. But we have tropical soda apple. So again, we have to have that base program of either Gray's and Extra Duracore but since goat weed is in the picture, we have to use the max rate of 2,4-D. So we're gonna add three pints of 2,4-D to the Grazen XHL to pick up this goat weed. In the meantime, depending on how big this dog fennel is, we may have to sacrifice some control on that. The dog fennel is head high. The, you saw you know, the aerial footage from the plots that 2,4-D isn't always that great on dog fennel. So, depending on what your main target is, if, do, if the goat weed is taking over the pasture more so than the dog fennel, I would target the goat weed first. All right. All right, the next scenario, I took out the tropical soda apple and some of the other weeds, and really the main driver, as far as I'm concerned, as far as difficulty to control is still the goat weed. So you're going after high rates of 2,4-D again. And again, you may have to sacrifice or you could spike 2,4-D with pasture guard to help pick up the dog fennel. And then just goat weed by itself. 
I mean, 2,4-D is the only answer I have in Bahia grass. If it's in Bermuda grass, Limpo grass, you can switch to metsulfuron and, and pick up that weed fairly easily. And it's cheap, which is a good thing. And then my last weed is not my favorite. It's like battling smut grass. It's something that I don't have a lot of good answers for right now, but it's something that we're actively working on. At this point in time, from a couple of trials that we've been looking at, uh, using liquid nitrogen as a carrier is helping herbicide activity quite a bit on this species. Other than that, in Bahia grass, we really don't have an option. In Bermuda grass, limp limpo grass, you can use metsulfuron. You have to read the labels though, because not all of them say the same thing. Escort, which has metsulfuron, I know does say this, that you can go up to an ounce per acre. And I know that's safe on the Bermuda grass and the limpo grass, so that would be your option for this species at that point in time. But in Bahia grass, we're still working on it. I don't have a solid recommendation yet, but it looks like using liquid nitrogen as a carrier with Grazenex and Pasture Guard, it's going to be the most effective. Um, as we do more and more of this, we'll figure that out. So that ends my presentation today. And I think I am the concluding presentation today. So I'd like to take this time to thank all the presenters, thank Dr. Engel and the department chairs for joining us today, and also our IFAS colleagues that joined us online as well, including our clientele. Don't forget if you need a copy of the proceedings that they are on our website and and Julie should be sharing a link in the chat box. She has shared the link in the, in the chat box for a survey of today's program. We would appreciate if you would fill that out. It shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes. We try to make those short and sweet so it's not so painful. But again, thank you today, Laura, for joining us and being our master of ceremonies. And thank you all for joining. And I hope everybody has a great day.